but we cannot start a program without the Most High God who has brought us together. So I'm going to invite uh, a pastor in the house uh, uh, to come and start with the opening prayer. Please, can we please put our hands together for Pastor Lee Zacchaeus. Thank you. <clears throat> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you. We commit this program to your hands. We ask the Lord you will take absolute and perfect control and let your name alone be glorified. Let us have oh God meaningful discussions and let everything go on the head. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, sir. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to change the program slightly. Um, as much as we don't have that much time, but I think it would be ideal for us to do that. Um, there's not a lot of us in the room yet, even though we're expecting... Um, we will, um, so we're going to get um, people to come... And not, not come, but wherever you are to introduce yourselves. Um, when people join us, then we'll introduce them later. I think it should be nice and dignifying for our delegates from Niger State um, to actually know who you are. I mean, when I mean introduce yourself, not five minutes, one minute. Your name, you don't have to give us your date of birth, but you can give us your name and what you do and what organization you represent. So I'm not going to do the front row yet uh, because that's going to be something to do with that. So I'm going to start from second row. So I'm going to pass the mic around. Please introduce yourselves, and then I'll introduce your dignitaries to you um, as we finish up. Thank you. My name is Mrs. Jean Douglas, coming to you here. My name is Honorable Ambassador of Appalachia to the Ocean of Middle Blueprint. My name is Mrs. Victoria Berendu, President of Ohana UK Women's Wing. My name is Dr. Gosukumara, President, Ugo Ambassadors UK, member of the Nigerian Organization in the South. My name is the Lioness, commonly known as the Lioness Chief, Lady Adai Kejiko. I'm a nurse practitioner, MC comedian. I'm also the women leader of your state, women here in UK. Good evening, all. My name is Engineer Helen Moye, a mechanical engineer by profession. I'm a PRO for Middle UK South and public relations officer on American Women United Kingdom. Thank you. Hello, good evening, all. My name is Gertrude uh, Manfaudi. I'm a registered nurse by profession, and I'm a member of uh, the American Women's Wing. Good evening. My name is Pastor Mrs. Okiru Ilebedu, popularly known as the Great Mama Pia. 
President of European Global Limits. Thank you. Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rita Okebu. I am, by background, a qualified health practitioner. I'm also a member and the provost for Imo State um, and also uh, Ohaneze. Ohaneze Women's Wing. Uh, thank you very much. Hi. Hi, yes. My name is Stella Okeke. I'm the Pekonis Ohaneze Nibu Women's Wing, also director of African Family Support Foundation. <coughs> My name is Nelly Zakios. I'm the chairman of the Nigerian Diaspora Organization, IPSAT. Thank you. I'm Mazi Ejofomaiko, Ngoi IPSAT. Good evening. My name is Shmao Fagum, and I'm a floor member everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> yeah, my name is Frank. Hello, good evening everyone and welcome our dignitaries. My name is Councillor Kate Anoglue and I used to be the mayor of Enfield on two occasions and uh, I'm a community leader and I'm public known as Auntie Kate. Thank you. Hello, I'm leader of support and political economy advisor and peace negotiator for reconciliation. I'm doing a very good job now. I am uh, uh, forming the platform, business platform, African Arabic business platform. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is um, Councillor Celia Osampo Hibbert. I am the debut special advisor for the current Imo State government on diaspora affairs. I'm also a three times elected councillor, currently serving a four-year term, which will come to an end in 2027, um, in Peck Ward, Wolverhampton, United Kingdom. Thank you. Right, hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Alistair. Uh, I'm the founder of the first black TV station in Europe called Ten Television. I'm a former global president of Nigeria in diaspora. I am the mentoring commander of the National Mentoring Corps, and I'm from Niger State, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to introduce our uh, dignitaries, but before I do so, I need to introduce myself. Because my, what my, men my mentor has mentioned so many things about me, I think you have to need an hour for me to tell you about myself. Because the dollar is coming for so long. But anyway, I'll call you My name is Kansu Mahara I am your compare today. Um, I am, at the moment, the current forum marshal under the president, um, Nii Zakios Kamido, UK South. I'm the first black councillor of Kent, and um, I'm following the footsteps of my auntie, um, Auntie Kate Anule, double mayor, and the first black mayor in the United Kingdom. So please put your hands together. Okay. We have. Big people here, Ben TV, who has represented us for so many years. My political jugunu, who, who trains me every single day, um, Dr. Ralph Abo, who's there. Um, and everyone here sitting, my boss at Nido UK South, who keeps on telling me off every single day, Pastor Mini Zakios, and great people of yourselves. So please put your hands together for yourselves for turn up. I'm going to introduce our dignitaries who have um, decided to grace this occasion. Um, with us. Um, I'm going to first introduce um, Honorable Murtala Vagana, Special Advisor. Please. Please ask for it. And I'm going to, invite, I'm going to um, introduce, he is the Honorable Commissioner of, of the Ministry of Industry and Trade and Investment. Please put your hands together for Dr. Amino Suleiman. <clears throat> this time around, I'm not sure if I should stand behind the wall or I should stand at the as I introduce 
um, the, 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 the guest of today, who is representing the state governor of Niger State. Um, please put your hands together for a strong man, a quiet man, a man that has a lot of timber and caliber behind him, a man that when he, when he comes into a place, you don't even know his worth, but he's, he's, he's a strong man in his community. Please put your hands together for the secretary to the state government, Dr. Kubaka. Now, we're going to roll the event over. In case there's an emergency, we don't expect one to happen. Please leave your bags, leave your shoes, and run through the sides, through the main door, turn left and outside, and I'll come and fetch you. I'll come and take your names. If you've not put your names down before you got in here, well, then I will find you 50 pounds per head if there's a fire. But we're not expecting any fire, so we are safe. The toilets are straight outside, one to the left, one to the right. At the far end, you'll find the men's and the women. So um, if you need to ease yourself, please do so. You drank a lot of water. There's jollof rice going around and there's meat pie, so you might need to use them at all some point in time. I am going to introduce the um, convenience for today. A woman, a woman who is known in the community, a strong woman, an entrepreneur in her own right, a woman that supports the community. She doesn't just support them, she supports them financially and heavily. Recently, she was at an event where she gave eight, almost 11,000 pounds to her community. A woman that stands strong in what she does, an entrepreneur in her own right, a founder of three different organizations in the United Kingdom. A woman that stands bold. I call her king of boys. Why do I call her that? She's a strong woman. She doesn't care. She stands tall anywhere she can find her. Um, please put your hands together for just one person, the CEO of Nissan College. Honorable. Lady Nikki. Thank you. Thank you. officials of Niger State, I believe everybody, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. Um, today um, is meant to be um, about out-of-school children. Um, we did not miss school just because we wanted to miss to see the layouts. The aim is to see the layouts of academy and the aim is to also understand that um, the school layout in the UK um, is very prominent and what we're able to do when we actually visit and um, implement um, all of the necessary resources in Niger State. Um, yesterday, um, we had the honour um, to welcome uh, His Excellency in the House of Lords yesterday and um, um, we had a great um, uh, important communication with all the investors and um, it was really a great, um, good um, environment and I was very happy that the governor actually came. And I'm also happy to have the officials, SSE and all officials be here in order to basically grace today's occasion. So um, I was invited um, by the governor to visit the United States. And visiting the United States um, was very uh, passionate for me because I'm very passionate about education, as everybody knows. I'm um, into it, um, education, I've been in education for quite a long time. And um, as somebody who understands um, leadership, and as somebody who understands um, community, we look at um, making sure that our children are well educated so that they can be productive in the environment and, and help and support the community, you know. So so when I went to Niger State, you know, I had the privilege to see some of the children. Um, um, unfortunately, you would have seen the um, videos or pictures, but of, um, we didn't have an internet here, so I would have showed you all the um, information that, um, that I actually acquired when I was in um, Niger State. So I got to speak with the children, they're very passionate. I got to see the schools and I got to see a land. When I'm in vast land in United States, it's very, very vast. Um, I've never come across um, that vast land before 
you know, so I had the privilege to basically fall in love with Niger State and with the landscape and everything that they actually was doing in Niger State. So the aim, you know, and the reason why we're here is to basically develop um, out of school academy, um, you know, to help and support the out of school children and also the, the, the children that are there from age of nursery school to or to university. So the aim is to basically assess grants that are available here in the UK. Um, you know, so it is it's really important and um, you know it's a vast amount of grants that we're looking to basically apply for and uh, and uh, and the reality is that when coming off um, understanding the landscapes we're trying to basically make sure the structures and infrastructures are well planned and you know so that was the reason we're here so that we can be able to see the layout so I will basically take you around the school so that you're able to see it before you go today and I thank you so much for coming but um, um, we're not going to take too long um, because of the time um, that we basically started this program and I would like to say thank you everybody that's been here today is actually a work day and you took your work day and come in and be here and you know and I really really appreciate this and I'll um, honor you going forward for actually attending this so um, like I did say thank you <laughs> <laughs> like I did say, you know, Niger State is a, a very beautiful place and uh, if you haven't been, please, I will say to you, and accommodative people as well, they're very nice, nice people, you know, they'll speak with you and, 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 um, and love talking to you, and, you know, so it's just a very lovely place. So I've adopted Niger State, I, I'm from the southeast, as everyone knows, I'm from Abia. But you know, <laughs> um, Niger State is definitely um, my adoptive um, <laughs> state for now, and um, um, the aim is for us to basically make sure that we develop the academies that we stated that we're going to do, and we're starting that immediately. Um, so um, thank you so much again for this lovely um, outlook, and I'm just loving to see everybody here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, you see, when you say someone is strong, and they, they, they have the they have the community the community's heart in their hearts, that's what they're making. That's what she does, and she does it on a continual basis. With a lot of um, um, community leaders who are here, I mean, I, I can point that almost everybody here that I know has done a lot towards making sure that our community grow, that we stand well, and we support um, everything that we do um, with, with with us and Nigerians and back home. So I'm going to invite another important person to come and speak. And that person is going to talk about what we stand as an, as a Nigerian organization here um, to actually support our country, Nigeria. So I'm going to invite the chairman of NIDO UK South to come out and just give us a, a brief um, speech about NIDO UK South and what our role is in um, making sure that our, that our homeland development happens back home. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, um, I didn't know I was going to speak, but um, I'll try. I have affiliations with um, Niger State, and it's a state that um, is paramount in my heart because of the fact that I served in Bida, and um, I enjoyed the culture. I traveled Mina, because our head, head office then, as coppers, was in Mina. And I remember Bosu Road. I still remember, is it Guarin Pa Market also? <laughs> there is one big market there. Guarin, Guarin. Guarin, yeah, Guarin. Where, yeah, where we buy a lot of uh, Kuli Kuli and Donkwa. <laughs> kuli Kuli and Donkwa. So I love, I love, I love Bida. I love Bida so much. I love Bida. And my experience as a young man was the first day I saw the Emir of Bida glowing in his um, gown, in his um, Emir, Emir ship um, uniform. We went to his um, palace 
And the man was just soft spoken like that. And I said, ah, maybe I should, it's as if I should just drive him from the seat and I sit there. You know, because he was so accommodating, loving, like a father to every one of us. So if you are looking for those people that are very accommodating and kind, look for them in Niger State. They are very accommodating. I didn't have any problem. So I'm happy to be here. Well, I've been asked to speak about Nigerian diaspora organization. Uh, Nigerian diaspora organizations is uh, the only diaspora organization that is in the Nigerian constitution. We were set up by um, former president Olusha Gwambasanjo, and we are gazetted in the Nigerian Constitution. I am the chairman of the UK South Wing, and um, mostly we are professionals. And our major interest is to give back to our community, which is Nigeria, homeland development. And we'll be doing a lot of work around that. And um, honestly speaking, now that you have one of us trying to give back again in a big way to Niger State, in our various individual capacity, we will support you and um, we will be there for you. So that I don't waste your time. I just want to speak, you know, short, short one. And I believe that this vision will grow. And um, I know in Niger State in those days, you see young boys, some of my copper friends, I didn't teach, but they were teachers. And they keep on telling me, how can a young boy say he's, he's not coming to school? And when you ask them, why are they not coming to school? They say, I took my child to the hospital. A young boy of 15 having a child. How that, will, that narrative will change. And um, there will be a lot of work that will be done to bring them to school, educate them effectively, and give them a better future. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to encourage my join just as well again to actually put your hands together for the cameraman, DJ Ike, and, and everyone that supplied the food here. So please put your hands together for them. Um, the chairman just said, you know, people that speak softly are powerful people and they are from Niger State, you know. It's true, but we are also soft spoken. Can I say I'm speaking very softly? <laughs> I'm very soft. My, my mentor who trained me, um, Dr. Ralph Abum, very soft spoken, but he's very loud when he's typing and he's sending a message through. My auntie, Lady June, um, Honorable June Douglas, very soft. She laughs, but when she's serious, then you will know that she's not soft spoken. So is Lady Nikki, very soft spoken, but believe me, step on her toes and you will know that she's not soft spoken. <laughs> Without much ado, I would like to bring to the podium um, our guest for today, the Secretary of the State Government, Dr. Abaka Osman. Please put your hands together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, point of correction, I am not a doctor, but uh, an allergy. So, uh, DJ, please note that. Uh, let me, on behalf of His Excellency, the Governor of Niger State, Right Honorable Umar Muhammad Bago, apologize, one, for late coming. Uh, it is not in our character to keep people waiting or to go to functions late. As a matter of fact, we were in another meeting with him, uh, and uh, we know this program was supposed to start from four o'clock, and when he realized that we were running late at uh, the other end, he now said, okay, uh, we shouldn't keep people waiting. And so he asked me to lead my team to ensure we attend uh, this gathering. So once again, I want to apologize for keeping you. And uh, I want to appreciate uh, this crowd for giving us the opportunity to talk and rob mine. Uh, 
As you are aware, Niger State or the, this administration of Right Honorable Muhammad Bago is a new one, brand new one. And uh, we have programmed ourselves to go out on investment drive. And we started all the way from the USA uh, sometime last week during the just concluded uh, hunger 78. That's the uh, United Nations uh, General Assembly. And from there, we came down here. Uh, that is to show the seriousness with which the government uh, wants to bring in investment into the states. And particularly, uh, education has become a focus as it regards to the al uh, school. I'm sure uh, many of you here will understand what uh, uh, the al children are. It was our own very uh, former president, uh, Ebele Jonathan, who actually <coughs> took the driving seat to introduce a uh, school for the out-of-school children, or al as we call them. And that, that program has really uh, helped, especially those of us in the northern Nigeria and uh, Niger State particularly. And that is why we uh, thought it very fit to ensure that that program uh, continues uh, with the support of Nigerians in diaspora, and uh, that we consider it as very, very important for this administration. Education is indeed a very uh, key and a focal point in the administration. And, uh, like I said, I'm here with uh, the special advisor to the government, I mean, to the governor uh, on special duties and uh, the Honorable Commissioner Investment who has been doing the talking as far as uh, investment is concerned. So I want to, at this juncture, I invite uh, Dr. Uh, Murtala Mohammed Bagana, who is the special advisor to the governor on special duties, to do further introduction and uh, talk generally on the administration. Thank you so very much. It's my pleasure. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mutala Mohamed Bagana. I'm a medical doctor by profession and also a management consultant by training. Thank you very much, sir, Your Excellency, uh, the Secretary to the State Government of Niger State, my big brother, my mentor, the Honorable Commissioner of Investment, uh, Trade, and also uh, private sector engagement. Mine is just to give an overview of uh, Niger State, and I think it is important that we have a general overview of Niger State and why we think there is a new sheriff in town, uh, there is a new dawn, and uh, my, the Honorable Commissioner will give details of exactly the potentials and areas of investment. Um, Niger State is a giant, but the giant has been sleeping. The giant is awake. Um, and for that reason, uh, we have taken steps to develop a robust plan for Niger. Bago is good for Niger. Niger is good for business. Anytime you remember Niger, please remember these five cardinal points. Uh, the acronym is, is good. ISGUD, and I'm sure the Honorable Commissioner will 
uh, expatiate more on this acronym. The I in the comprehensive plan is about improving the livelihood of people in Niger. That is the I. Areas around human capital development, education, health, water and sanitation. These are basically things that we think should not be a necessity. It is things that should be a privilege that people should have. And those social amenities is the only driving force that will encourage people to improve in their lives. And we think we want to focus on that. The S is around sustainable economy. You cannot have a sustainable economy without a stable security. So central to our driving the economic activity of Niger State is to secure the lives and properties of our people. So His Excellency is very, very particular around security. So we are taking up the issues of security in Niger State and we are ensuring that one, we have created a ministry for pastoral and mamadi just to focus on the full and needs to ensure that we also have a, a ministry for homeland security. And there is a special advice on security just to emphasize and drive the whole, the point that security is very critical. The G in the five plan is good governance. For us in Niger, good governance means accountability and transparency. Ensuring that civil servants are fit for purpose. So in the overall reform of the civil service, we are ensuring that people understand their job description, understand their schedule, because what happened back home is we have lacked the ethics of working. People don't go to work. People are not serious. We are here in UK. We see how things are organized. So we cannot have the engine room that will drive the reform without reforming the civil service. And very central to that is ensuring that people understand what they are supposed to do. The U, very important before I forget, is performance review, reward and sanction. One of the things we want to do, and my brother will talk so much about it, is we want to reward hard work. We want a situation where we will have the best civil servant of the year coming to UK for a program to improve on his or her academics or any other uh, leadership program that will deem fit. So civil service reform is very critical. The U, because the good there is, is GUD. The U is urban renewal. I know someone was talking about he finished I think he served in Mina. And uh, beautifully, he still remembers Bida, Boso, Guayu Road, and the rest of that. Mina will change. I'm sure by the time you go back, you will not recognize Mina. There is an urban renewal agenda of His Excellency. We want to urbanize. Why will people not be in Mina and go to work in Abuja? We want to connect Abuja to Mina with a 25-minute rail line. That is part of the urbanization. <laughs> Why will someone think about Niger and myopic around 10 or 15 years plan? We are thinking beyond that. We are big in our ambition. We are thinking of Niger in the next 50 years a state that is 10% of Nigerian size. We are not just power states. A state with four hydroelectric power dam, a state with the largest land mass, tributaries of water, River Niger, you cannot but industrialize that state. And that is why very critical to our agenda is creating access to the hinterland 
So the, the, the entire Mina Abuja road will be dualized. Not two lanes, four lanes in a way that people will not recognize. How will you go to Bida and you are going through for the man that knows Bida and you are going through Mina. You don't need to go through Mina. There is a bypass that will take you directly from coming from Abuja all the way to be there. The entire transport system from the southern part of the country goes through Mina, goes through Niger State. The one coming from Lokoja goes through Suleja. The one coming from uh, Elori goes through Bida and Mina. That is not what we want. We want to do a life build. So urbanization, urban renewal is very critical. The last point is the D. Development enablers. In order to ensure that the first four agenda will be fulfilled, we need enablers. We need this kind of partnership. We need collaboration. We need finance. I was born and brought up in Onicha. I went to CK. So Unufumo to na Naija, una mana Naija change go. There is no enabler than this kind of collaboration and this kind of experience that I have seen in people in this room. We need partnership. We need people to hold our hands and say, we have seen it in other climes. Please, you guys should come. Let's help you and change Niger. Because I promise you that what we are going to do in Niger is to showcase that things do happen when people come together. And the giant is awake. Thank you very much. you have actually won the team over for us. <laughs> so on a serious note, um, the SSG has spoken. Multala, who is also an evil man, has spoken. <laughs> but I want to speak about um, investments. And first, before I speak about investments, I want to announce to the team that one of the special advisors to the governor is an Igbo man. And he owns one of the best hotels in Mina, Haske Hotel. Now, um, my colleagues have spoken to you. One of the focus of this present administration is to drive investment into Niger State. Now, it's not easy getting investments into states, especially if the state is not ready. Niger has been ready. The governor in his first 100 days have signed agreements that would bring roads to Niger state, which will invariably create that enabling environment that we are looking for. But what my ministry is doing is we have picked a few priority areas where we want to channel the first set of investments that will come in. Um, and it is not by order of priority. We are already speaking to African Development Bank to come and fund the special agro-industrial processing zone. This would be in BIDA. We are looking at the extractive industry because we have a lot of lithium in addition to gold and other solid minerals in Niger State. We're looking at manufacturing sector, but most importantly, I want to tell you about the automotive industry in Niger State. This automotive industry from Niger State is a gentleman from Imo State that went all the way to South Africa 
and brought some investors from South Africa to come and partner with him. Charles, like I call him, he's half Nigerite. And what His Excellency has done, because he was so impressed with what Charles has done, is to give an area around Makunkele. This is as if you're going to Zungiru. Gave and approved that this automotive special economic zone should be sited there. And I'm sure by the time we resume, we go back to uh, Mina, probably his papers will be ready. But the day he came into my office, he came with seven South Africans. And the idea is to set up a special economic zone that will cater only for assembly of vehicles. Now, another thing that you need to know is Suleja, which is part of Niger State, also has the highest population of Igbo people. Most of the businesses that are done in Suleja are done by the Igbos there. So they have contributed tremendously to the GDP of Niger State. And that's why we must partner together. We are looking for you to come. There are areas that we want you to please look into and see how we can work together. One is the rail, the light rail that my brother has spoken about. The second one, which is also very critical and important, is the Barrow Port. And why am I saying that is important? Lagos is congested. We need to move away from Lagos to other areas down south, if you want Port Harcourt, if you want Calabar. But then even if we have that, we have a very big waterway all the way through to Barrow, which is the gateway to northern Nigeria. So why can't we have vessels going to maybe Calabar Port and then bring off those containers to smaller vessels that can go through the waterway. You know, this is to congest the ports and also to preserve our roads. So please, I am inviting you, whatever the requirements are going to be, come and invest in the development and establishment of the borough port. I'm also inviting you, Niger State government, in collaboration with some financial institutions, are going to put the real but what about the roller coaster? We are inviting you to come and invest in the roller coaster. Let's be able to take our goods from Lagos on the rail all the way up to uh, the north. Let's be able to have people living in Niger State, Mina, and work in Abuja, because you know that you can only take 25 minutes or 45 minutes to get to Abuja. Come and invest in real estate. We will give you land. Even if it is 10 houses you want to build, please come to us. We will give you land. Build your 10 houses in Suleja. If you want, build your 10 houses in Mina. But because you are in UK, he spoke about Kuli Kuli. <laughs> he spoke about Dampua. We also have Shea Butter. Niger State is the home of shea butter. 57% of the world shea butter is located in Niger State. Come and work with us and invest in this export-oriented investment. You're already in UK, you know pharmaceuticals, you know food companies. Come to us, let's work with you in establishing a company that would process the shea nuts into butter or cake. We will also work with you to ensure that that export, you want export certificate from Nigerian Export Promotion Council, my ministry would work with you and get that for you. In a nutshell, Niger State is open for investment and we need our Igbo brothers and sisters to strengthen that relationship 
This language he has spoken, he's only him that spoke it. I want my own children to speak Igbo. So let's strengthen that relationship. Let's be partners in progress. And I want to stop here. If there are questions, we can take it just for a while. And then uh, Madam Nikki will take us around. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. Um, I'll pass the mic around as soon as I want to ask, ask questions in a minute. Um, <clears throat> thank you very much, sirs, for your speeches and for inviting us over. It's amazing that you've said that because um, I'm actually talking about myself right now. I am the highest supplier of Kulikuli in the United Kingdom. Wow. I am the highest. Nobody does it. And that's what I do. I, I, I run a couple of food, in the, food, food businesses here. But in terms of Kulikuli, I'm the highest supplier of it. And for you, when Pastor Lee said it earlier, I just laughed. At the last AGM, my members, her members of my, of my organization tell me I brought Kuli Kuli to all of them to eat. Um, share butter also, yes. I am not the highest supplier, but people, there's a lot of, there's a lot of companies that do it here and they need it here for different things. So yes, you have opened the door for um, companies to come in here into Niger State and actually work with yourselves and make sure that, um, um, that Niger State prosper as well as we businessmen prosper. You talk about Kuli Kuli, but then if you talk about Kuli Kuli, you have to talk about peanuts. We are the highest consumers of peanuts around at the moment. Um, and let me, make, let me just say this here before we carry on. If we understand how blessed we are as a country in Nigeria, if we understand, then we will not be taking it for granted at all. Let me use Kulikuli as an example. The Asian market, the Asians, eat more Kulikuli than we Nigerians eat Kulikuli. You will not believe that. Because they don't just eat it, they use it for cooking. And let me, call, let me tell you what the composition of it is. There's oil in Kulikuli. There's peanut in it. There's pepper in it. There's ginger in it. Yes? All that is what you eat in your chicken tikka masala. Because what they do is they make it to a place, they stir it and give it a big, big, big pot. And out of that, they scoop for chicken masala. They put their leaves on it. And chicken curry, they scoop and put another kind of, maybe parcel or one, maybe coriander or one. Where does that come from? How did I know? I used, I used to supply somebody. And um, I saw him eating it. An Indian man eating kulikuli. I'm thinking, is this guy okay? And I, I, I sat beside him and I said, oh, um, what are you doing? So I'm waiting to collect money from one of the highest supply um, um, manufacturers here, a retail wholesalers here, wives. And I said, okay. So you eat kulikuli? He said, yeah, 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 yeah. I just started eating it. But um, we, we sell a lot of it. We buy a lot of it. I said, what do you use it for? He said, oh, we use it to cook. Then I realized that I was supplying Wallis and Wallis was supplying him. But Wallis didn't want me to know that they were supplying him. Now, at the price at which they were buying the Kulikuli was amazing. It was 300% of what I was selling it to them. And they were not just buying the lumps, they were buying the crumbs that we threw away and we put in the bin. And that is how I started to sell crumbs of Kulikuli to the Asian market. And they still buy it till tomorrow. So, thank you very much for enlightening us on some of those things. We're going to open this room for questions and answers. But somebody has just told me to tell you that the next time that you um, give an award to the best civil servants. Um, my brother over there, uh, we call him Digital Ambassador, um, is up there. He would sponsor every digital training that he needs to have in the United States. So now we're going to open the floor for questions. Um, if you, uh, can you please start? So hold him responsible next time. So I think that all the digital stuff that you want, he will do. If you want television training, we have somebody. If you want legal training, we have. Accountants, we have. Businesses, we have. Sir, we are with you. We are all the way. So put your hands together for us. So please, the floor is open, ladies and gentlemen. Before um, we take them down to school, we can see how our school here is done. And then before we start eating, um, can we please, if they want to hear from you, they want questions that you have in your mind that you want to ask, so that they can put your minds at rest and answer your questions. They've given us a key to a virgin land, a, a, a land that is full of milk and honey. I am the class captain here today because I have the map. So I pick my land force to build my house before you guys apply. Am I right? Okay, so, so if you want to apply the guy, I will know. You cancel it. Okay, so please, if you have any questions, um, please let's go to But I'm going to invite my, uh, my mentor, um, Honorable Alisa Tuede, um, the, the owner of MTV, the first man to keep us proud on television. Please put your hands together by the Thank you.
Thank you very much. As I said, I'm adopted in United States because people have been sending me messages. I thought you were from another state, blah, blah. Okay. I'm fully Nigerian, as you all know. I'm excited about it. I always say I don't have a state of origin because that is normally one of the problems in Nigeria. Which state are you from? Okay, you're not from my state. I'm insulted. You have to call me anything. But I should be your best friend because I'm Nigerian. Now, uh, for the sake of the other people here, Honorable, we didn't, or rather, I would like you to expand a little bit on agriculture because uh, the state is very big and I have an interest in agriculture, make my living, especially plants there and all that kind of thing. And for the sake of the others, so I think it is enough. Thank you. Thank you for drawing my attention to agriculture. The opportunities in agriculture is enormous because if you look at agriculture, the entire value chain, you can break it down into production, into storage, into processing, into marketing, even research, um, biofuel development. Now, I think I mentioned a special economic zone, but I did not mention I did not go in depth into the Badegi one. And this is the one that um, a feasibility studies has already been done. What we are actually looking for are anchor tenants. The lead produce there is rice, but it's followed up by other produce. Because even wheat grows now in Niger State. We just came to discover that. But largely, we would also request support from you in what we call in our, with our new agricultural transformation strategy. The plan there is to set up centers of excellence in the three senatorial districts. These centers of excellence are going to house agronomists, they are going to house tractor drivers, they are going to have house tractor repair people and extension workers. The idea is to train our youth. Train our youth on how to become mechanics. Train our youth on how to uh, learn how to drive the tractors. Train our youth on how to become extension workers. And where are they going to be servicing? Every senatorial district is going to start with about 600 hectares of land. One hectare by one hectare is going to be allocated to a youth. And the idea is this one hectare is yours. Government is going to give inputs. Government is going to send extension workers and agronomists to supervise. And at the end of the day, during harvest, government is also going to uptake so that the youth are, you know, are supported. Now, we will also need you, in this case, to be our ambassadors here. What has been <coughs> purchased and uptaked? we should be able to export them here. And that's the reason why His Excellency has mandated that somebody should get wire houses for Niger State in the United Kingdom. This is so that once our produce lands UK, they are taken to the wire houses and automatically we get off-takers. Now, when I was talking about um, processing, I only spoke about the share. You see, we have sunflower oil being imported to Niger State. We don't have, or rather imported to Nigeria as a whole, we don't have any business having that imported back to us because sunflower is grown in Niger State. Sunflower is grown in Nigeria. Why can't we set up our own processing factories to process the sunflower and export? Um, when I was growing up, I've always known the Igbo as being very industrial. In fact, the business, um, what is that word to use? Industrialization in Nigeria started from the Igbo land. So, and that is the reason why we're speaking to you. We need you to come and support us in the entire agricultural value chain. If you want, you can leave the primary uh, growing of uh, products to the youth there. But that secondary 
stage where we would have factories, where we would have processing um, um, equipment. We need you to come in. Um, we export things. We don't have cleaning um, services. We don't have defeating warehouses. And I think um, all these are part of the value chain of agriculture. And I hope, sir, I'm able to do justice to your question. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We have, uh, before I call on the next speaker, so, sir, sir, you can not say somebody else wants to ask a question. Okay. But before that, I wanted to also introduce um, a gentleman who is here who deals in um, in uh, renewable energy. Yeah. And he's about to break a record in Nigeria at the moment. Please put your hands together for um, Honorable Mungo. So we are setting your question. Now, in terms of Brit, when you want your question, after the chair of the meeting said about the young people having children, you know, so children having children. I really want to know, what are your plans to empower women? Because women are actually, if you really want because they are the mothers of any development. And if you, you're going to have, you mentioned about training the young people that should start at home. And who is the one that will be doing this, instilling it in the ears of the children and sending them to school when it's all developing to home? So what have you got to empower these women so that they'll be able to get um, your plans in the future? Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Um, I would say a little, but then I would um, invite uh, my boss, the SSG, to elaborate more on the uh, women empowerment. First and foremost, um, it's critical and important for you to know that um, to know that 45% um, of the appointments of the Niger State Government are women. 45% um, as, it, as it is right now. Um, secondly, he's got a lot of programs that have been lined up for women. Um, one of the programs I know I am anchoring, and that is taking um, the women to Turkey in a province called Sakaria. Um, what Sakaria wants to do is the mayor of Sakaria is, um, he's made a budget to train women only in weaving because we do a lot of weaving. Um, so um, he has promised that um, uh, once we can take our women to Turkey, he would take care of their living expenses and they will be trained from between 30 days to six weeks you know, where they'll be trained, and when they're coming back, they're coming back with their kids, you know, to, um, um, so that they're able to train, you know, other women. Even in the sheer value chain, the picking of the sheer nut itself is being done mostly by women, and um, His Excellency, the governor, you know, has given directives that the kits that they would need, you know, in carrying out the services, you know, be provided to them. The warehouses where these uh, share bottles would all be moved to, you know, will be owned by women in, in cooperative uh, form, you know, and what have you. But I want the, his excess, the SSG to come and elaborate more on the plans for women. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Tanara. Uh, like you rightly said, uh, the government of uh, Niger State, led by Right Honorable Mohammed Babo is very woman friendly. Uh, he has already uh, passed the 35% uh, 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 woman uh, affirmation. He is also uh, one of in one of the programs that we are running, especially as it has to do with the uh, share butter project. 
he intends to employ about 40,000 women, 40,000, who will be involved in the process of, uh, of uh, picking these nuts from, from the trees and uh, into the point at which it will be exported. This, uh, he has made it very clear, it will be anchored by the women. <coughs> He's also created a ministry for small and medium scale, medium scale enterprises, which is anchored by a woman. And that program is mainly targeted at the widows, the uh, less privileged women, particularly in the, in the society, and uh, which is aimed at uh, to ensure that the women are able to take care of the out-of-school children. As we are aware, uh, Niger State uh, has been one of the states that has uh, suffered this uh, banditry. And uh, out of that, we have had uh, to deal with widows, and uh, it means empowering them to be sure uh, to take care of the women, I mean the children. And so uh, he has uh, so many projects that is targeted at women and uh, we hope with uh, this uh, investment coming in, uh, we'll be able to do that. Thank you so very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, we've got another question, but before that, and it's nice that you've just spoken about um, the quota of women in the um, in Niger State. Um, we have the chair for the uh, Nigerian um, Diaspora Women's Leadership Forum, um, Lady Kim Douglas here, who would eventually work with you very much. So, if you want to ask a question. For Mina, I think Mina for me, I was born in Lagos, I schooled in Bauchi, and um, apparently my sister got married to one of the Mina, and um, Mina are Urban renewal. When we talk about urban 
do all this? And who will be advising you of where the grants are, how it can be accessed, so that you can support us where we come on ground to come and support Niger State? Who will be happy to use Niger State as a pilot state in Nigeria? And we are sure other states you will be a shining example to other states. Thank you very much. And we are open to be here this evening to, you know, to, to listen to what good tidings you brought for us. And I'm happy and we say thank you to the government. And thank you everyone that is here tonight. God bless you. industry here. I recently came back from Nigeria and I happened to be in Abuja. And um, the mode of transport system in Nigeria is very, very poor. And I was speaking to a friend about it, that um, 
I would like to meet up with the Minister of Transport to give my idea and all that. And what I got was very negative. I got very negative energy that um, just forget it because they are not going to see you because people before them won't even let it happen. And I'm very happy that um, you made mention about how Niger State is um, helping women to build up and they are taking them to Turkey for weaving as a rock because I watch a lot of Turkey movies so I know what they do there. So my question is, um, where do people like me come in? Since I'm in the industry already, how do I step up? How do I come in? Because part of why I went to Nigeria was to look for something to do in Nigeria, to work in Nigeria. But if I'm getting a negative energy, what do I do? Thank you. Yo, you actually don't have a problem. So the challenge sometimes is when you come, you think you go to the federal government. No, come to the subnational. It's like I keep telling people, even in my former life before I went back to Nigeria, because I had worked in Nigerian Investment Promotion Commission for 24 years in Abuja. Investment does not sit in Abuja. Investment sits in the state, the local government, and the world. This transport sector there that, you, that you're in, come to Niger State. Give us your ideas. What do you want to do? Why must we go to Abuja? I'll give you an example. Niger State just acquired 200 CNG bodies. Now, there's a lot of opportunity there. What about the gas station for the compressed natural gas? What about the mechanics? that would fix the car. What about spare parts dealers for the car? This is in the transport value chain. Ticketing. So if you come to us in Niger State because you are in the transportation sector, we will welcome you with an open hand. Because you're one of us. Um, my brother here did speak of something. In DJ. You know, that has always been our problem. As far as I'm concerned, you're a Nigerite. Just come. You're in the transport system. I will facilitate because that is my ministry. The Ministry of Transportation will regulate because that is their responsibility. But I speak the language of the private sector. So where you're getting challenges, it's for me to step in to ensure that that challenge is not there. So please, you're welcome to Niger State for your transport. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you see, see, 
this year. The routine, the big proposal, they have their land according to them, and all they want is maybe the machinery and the training on how to do it. Because you realize that the youth, uh, if they are not trained, uh, they will be part of this city security problem. You say if you don't engage the youth, they will engage themselves in one way or the other. So I, I'm trying to figure out the practical way we can get into the youth in the north to minimize this Boko Haram and all the rest of them. Now, I have trained them online for some time now. Semi-bio, which is a, a organi organic fertilizer in, in Sierra Leone. We are the first to bring it to West Africa. Uh, Ghana, uh, Togo, Burkina Faso. Now they want to bring it to Nigeria, and we are trying to go through the Ministry of Agriculture. Recently, I heard that there's this uh, uh, program that uh, uh, using uh, fertilizer as a palliative, and we want to encourage organic fertilizer so that we minimize this uh, uh, chemical, this thing that is causing a lot of kidney problem. Every time when you, you see a new radio and TV station, people are begging for the kidney transplant in India, about 15 million and all that. And then we discuss part of the cost to this uh, chemical fertilizer uh, we are using. So we have gotten that fertilizer and we are bringing a shipload of it, but we need support. In other words, who can raise a BG for the, in the name of the fertilizer company so that they will bring uh, 12,500 metric tons to Nigeria on a monthly basis for five years. By the time you we flood the whole country with that uh, organic fertilizer, all these illnesses will minimize because the food security will be there and all that. So how do we work with you? We have already gotten the youth, and they are solidly behind us, and they are ready to leave the streets and go into farming. But we need to do it in such a way. And they chose Sikmik Seed as their own way. They can come in, and what they do, it is because they have given even the places overseas where they will uh, sell that. They have horse takers and the rest of them. How can we help the youth? Thank you. Oh, okay, sir. Um, First, I'm going to have to check the bandwidth to ensure that this fertilizer, first and foremost, is not banned in the location in Nigeria. First, I have to confirm that it's not banned. Now, secondly, even if it is banned, but there's an assurance either from you or those you are buying from that they will eventually set up a factory in Mina, then we can work out for them to import for a while just to test the market mm -hmm. but with the agreement that after a social period of time after the market is been tested and the goods is good for the market they will set up a factory So that the ministry can be solidly behind you. And I'm talking of the organic fertilizer. Yes. Now, on the issue of the uh, sesame seeds, lands are already available. This agricultural transformation strategy is about to start. If we have a database of these people, we will just automatically bring them on board. And the government has already established a sesame seed cleaning facility in Niger State. It belongs to the government, but supervised by my ministry. So, if we can have this youth, you know, to come either to farm, or to begin to even buy the sesame seeds, bring them for cleaning, then they would work with the Niger State Commodity and Export Agency to try and see what they can export. So, there are solutions to all these problems, but we just have to follow the process and the process. Thank you.
about uh, girl child education uh, I want to inform you that uh, Niger State is uh, currently running a program that is targeted at uh, girl child specifically and uh, we have uh, assessed a grant uh, which we have counterfunded uh, I 
think about two times the amount we received. I think about uh, maybe $4.5 million. And we have uh, put in the same basket uh, the equivalent times two to make sure that the girl child gets educated and the girl child is prepared for life. And that encompasses a lot, which uh, means the girl child will be prepared to be a leader, the girl child will be prepared for politics, the girl child will be prepared to be a good parent, and so on and so forth. And uh, this program, this out of school uh, uh, project, is mostly targeted at the girl child because uh, uh, somebody told a story here. Uh, the the chairman. chairman, he actually uh, said, uh, he mentioned a, a child parent, which means that uh, uh, somebody at, at school age, maybe 15, was already uh, a father. And that means he must have married a girl child who is also in the same uh, age bracket. And that is what uh, all these programs are targeted at, to ensure that those things are minimized. You may not be able to completely eradicate it, but you can minimize it. And the program here, or the project, the grant is targeting is to ensure you address the root cause of those things, one of which is abject poverty. That is a problem. Uh, and that is why you find uh, parents taking their children, especially the girls, out of school because they cannot pay their school fees, uh, they cannot provide for them outside the primary school age, and that becomes a problem uh, once you can't do that. And this out-of-school project and the, the Adolescent Girl Initiative, uh, which is targeted at women too, is to ensure that uh, you provide all the necessities that is needed for a girl child from the primary school up to the tertiary education to make sure you prepare her for life after school. And uh, honestly, believe me, Niger State is targeting to ensure that uh, the girl child is uh, adequately provided for. Thank you, Sir Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because of time, we've got, I know I've already counted six more people to speak. Um, what do you want to say something? Okay, just a minute, just to add um, to what uh, His Excellency has mentioned. Around the political angle, one of the things we are deliberate to do in Niger is apart from the appointment, the 45% uh, affirmative action for women, uh, one of the things that His Excellency is also looking at is the, the next election for local government. All vice chair, chair lady, if I may use the word, chair person, thank you very much. Are going to be women. Completely to the first local government in Nigeria. This is not just. What can they be here? No, for, for places where a woman, as I speak to you, a woman is a local government chairman in Nigeria State. But for, as part of the nomination, if a man ultimately gets a ticket to run, the deputy will be a woman. No doubt about that. So this is something from the political angle that His Excellency want to do. And in Niger State, the deputy speaker of the House of Assembly is a woman. So, and I, I like what my sister mentioned. You can't do this without a deliberate political way. And for you to do that, you have to begin to set up processes 
that will allow woman, a woman or women to come up. If we don't do that, they will definitely not come up because you know the system in itself is already disenfranchising women and it will be difficult for them to come up. I mean, those, those are the things we are doing deliberately in Niger State. Around agriculture, one of the things I want to add around agriculture is in Niger State, one of the policies that we want to ensure within the first one year, we want to cultivate 250,000 hectares of land. And you cannot cultivate this land with the conventional rules and uh, we need partnership around ensuring that we have the necessary tools and equipment to do that. That's why we are looking for partnership. Within the next four years, we want to cultivate to one million hectares of land out of the God given 83 million hectares of land that we have in Niger. So there is no other investment destination we want to think of, if not Niger State. And just to add to what Honorable Commissioner has mentioned, around the C of O and acquisition of land, in Niger, we are willing to sell land. And we want to do that electronically in a way that within 48 to 72 hours, once you have the necessary documentation, you get your C of O. The C of O should be really digitalized. That is exactly what we are doing in Niger. Because that is the only two ways we want to get ourselves out of poverty, agriculture, and selling of land. And by selling this land, because we know a lot of people want to invest in our land. And investing in land means that the whole idea of indigenous native are things that are hindering people from acquiring land. But in Niger, the rest are sure that we are ready for business and we are good for business. Thank you. Thank you. We've got it. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, just, uh, just, sorry. Let me just add uh, uh, something. Uh, His Excellency has recently, uh, through executive order, made it a policy that uh, apart from special grace of God, I won that election. But what happened is a history. 27 um, local government area, just like our sister here mentioned. No single woman. We were about three women that contested. And I 
I was put in a position to resign and step down. People who followed me actually knew what exactly happened. But I came back alive. Security is a problem, is a big problem. And my life was threatened about three times while I was there. But I thank God I'm here today. So the area of empowering women is very essential. I recently um, did a program where we want to support the youth, especially the girl child, who are talented in different areas. We decide we are going to help to train them up. I happen to be the president of Imo State Women Ambassadors. And we, the Imo State Women here in the diaspora, we have come together um, to raise some funds to do this. So if there's any way we can come in, in the Niger State, um, I'm willing to help in any area. Ambassador Lady Nikki Emenike is a great icon to our community. She has done so well in the lives of individuals, organizations, and I believe that's why we're here tonight to support her. And I will do my best in any area I am being called, I will support. But please, if there's any way you, Niger State government, can educate other states to give peace a chance, to allow people in the diaspora to contest for a position, we are human beings. All the money that's being sent from, or that comes to Nigeria, comes, to the dias comes from the diaspora. So it's important to bring us on board. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I would, uh, what I will do, because our delegates have to go, is I will let everyone ask their question for one minute, and they can answer the question in one minute, and without meeting. I'm sorry, I have to do that. So everybody will ask their question, um, and then they will answer that question in one minute, and then that will be the end of it. So sis, your question, boss. I had gone through the education system and I owned a family. I worked as a nurse midwife in Abuja for many, many years before I came over here uh, to work uh, as a nurse as well. Uh, my interest is about women who are on the older, older women. What is our plan looking after our aged women in our country, in our state, Niger state? Um, in the aspect of um, care homes or where they can be looked after and are people actually empowered to be able to support our mothers, our grandmothers, our great grandmothers in an area that um, would help keep their daily uh, living on. So if we think on that aspect of it, I'm also available to support and train people in opening care homes, even if it's a one. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Good evening, all protocols observed. Um, this is the lioness, which is a name I prefer to be known as. Um, okay, um, I want to appreciate Lady Nikki, my sister, who has put this event together. It's quite interesting. In fact, I'm happy that I'm part of it tonight. Thank God for 
of duty. Um, my sister has spoken, the last speaker has spoken about um, women and old age, and I'm coming from that aspect as well. As a health pro, um, professional, I'm a registered nurse, and recently I lost my brother's wife um, at childbirth. She had a baby, and the next story we had, she bled to death. That really um, saddened my heart. So I want to know the plans for our hospitals. Um, it's, it's like the hospitals back home are becoming dead traps. People get sick, people pack their car, go into hospital for an appointment, and you come and tell the, the, the house help waiting for madam that the madam that just dropped her off is dead. So sometimes you wonder what is going on. Um, I want to please ask, what is Niger State doing towards our health issue, our health, um, you know, like the hospitals? Because so many, so many have died in the past out of negligence, out of no adequate care. There is, you, you're asked to provide blood, you're asked to go and buy it. You come into hospital for operation, you're asked to buy the needle, you're asked to buy the cutting wool and stuff like that. What is happening with regards to this in Niger State? Um, just like my sister said, if there is any way some of us would need to help or contribute, um, stuff like um, blood pressure machine, um, the one for the, the um, everything, we, we are ready to contribute to, towards that so that people will get to get away and, you know, thank you very much. some policies. So what are the sustainability of the policies initiated by the government? Is there guarantee that after the government, after the government has ended, will it be sustainable by the other, uh, by the other uh, government? Because the maximum is eight years. Then the second one is, I know my brother has spoken about renewable energy, and I'm partnering with a company that are planning to produce panels, solar panels. In Nigeria, and Niger State has a very vast landmass for those solar panels to be um, in there implemented and they can be produced also in the state. to my realization that anytime I travel to Nigeria and see the state of people um, that have got learning disability, mental health, um, they are not really looked after. So it's a point, uh, my background, I've got a degree in education as well. So I'm interested in women education, uh, but also looking at things like uh, physical health, mental health, and as I say, um, learning disability. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, hello. Um, based on what the professional colleague just said, um, yeah, I'm, interested, um, I'm a registered nurse as well. So um, my question is that what is the way forward? Um, I'm willing to come into the area to help to improve the system.
My question is this, education, education. Um, I'm interested in supplying books in Nigeria, not just in my state, I'm from my other states. I've tried to do that in my state. They blocked me, thinking I'm coming to contest or take, or take over the government. It's not. So I was wondering, our governor, what are you going to do in those blockages? Thank you. So you can answer the questions. Sorry, I'm sorry about this. Um, a lot of questions on my phone, so I'll just have. I'm sorry, everybody, I've not been able to bring the mic to you, but time is far spent, and the delegates will have a group picture before they head off, and the government wants to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for those questions. I think uh, I'll just be very brief. Uh, my sister asks about um, age, uh, women, and uh, care homes. To be honest with you, uh, as a country, is a shame. Not until now, we do not have a subnational plan for age home, care homes, hospices. We don't. But luckily, I was part of the Federal uh, Development of Health Plan for Nigeria. And that is why, if you look closely, uh, what we have now is mini coordinating Minister of Health and social welfare is deliberate because we want to begin to think about that. So I would really be happy to partner with you in doing that for Niger State because, to be honest, we, we want to start thinking about that. Care home and what, and it's business, to be honest. <coughs> yeah. The second uh, question was around hospital and what we have. Uh, I'm a medical doctor by training. Um, and I'm also, I'm also a, a, a management consultant when it comes to establishment of hospitals and trying to manage hospitals. One of the things we are doing in Niger differently, we are the only state as we speak in Nigeria that has speak tell the Ministry of Health. Right now in Niger, what we have is Ministry of Primary Health Care. And Ministry of Secondary and Tertiary. There is a reason for that. We don't have time. I will have gone deeper into what we want to do. But it is important that the part of the health system that cater for majority of Nigerians, those in the rural areas that contribute to 70% of the disease body, should be taken care of. And that is exactly what the FNC is doing. And that is why he also appointed me as a special advisor, so that I can also be working with those people in the Ministry of Primary Health Care, Secondary and Tertiary Health Care. And they are completely separate, and they have responsibilities to cater for the helping of uh, Niger life. And we have a comprehensive plan for doing that. And next, in, in the next two months, we are willing to present at the National Council of Health in Nigeria why we actually have a ministry dedicated for primary health care. The, the other part that I actually wanted to touch on is the mental health. Yes, please, I want to get your contact. This is something that we can really work together. But lastly, I just want to say something very uh, critical in this our graduate. I think as a country, we have never lacked plans or ideas or strategies is execution. The political will to execute is very critical. And I can assure you, His Excellency, right on Muhammad Umar Babu, is capable, he's energetic, he's a champion of unique hope, and he has demonstrated that he has the political will to implement our program. My other brother is going to talk about the sustainability and other areas, but the very important thing, what we want to do is that every single plan, every single covenant that we have had with people, we want to execute it. He's a ruthless executionist, and I can assure you, we are going to deliver on our promise. Well um, thank you, and I hope my uh, comments would round us up because there are other people waiting uh, for us to move to them. So yes. Um, 
Now, any governor can come out and tell you that I have a succession plan. When I leave, I'll make sure the person that will come on board is going to follow through with my plan. It doesn't always work like that. And I'll give you an example. Of course, I'm going to do it. It doesn't work like that. So what we have put in place is, and I'm talking from the investment angle, is investment promotion and protection agreement, IPP agreement. It's been gazetted, and once it is signed, nobody, no government can come and opt from it. That is the sustainability. On the, on the renewable energy, you know, I did mention, because we have a ministry of power and renewable energy, and the idea is to have at least 45% of the energy produced in Niger State coming from renewable energy, whether solar, wind, or biomass. So please come. You are protected, my brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry. I've, I've been told of course that I don't know what to say something for us, which I should say in a minute, but before we go. If you need to get the contacts to be able to work for the state, please um, try and get in touch with Nikki and, and um, you'll work with Nikki or Nikki directly herself and you'll collect all this um, program information and pass it on to them and they'll pass it on to you. So please, um, that's this. Started, African Forest Sport Foundation started last year, 2017, where I used my own money to empower 90 women in seven states in Nigeria. And that has really worked a lot. I empower them and they form cooperative. So, and the North were part of it. So, Kaduna, Abuja, Lagos, uh, Abia, Enugu, and um, Anambra State, and Imo State. So, Mina, you are part of it. So if we are to get to your end, and we have a grassroots um, organization that we work with, who is also dealing with a girl child, and uh, they sponsor the problems, is there any way we could collaborate with you through our grassroots? Thank you. Thank you. After the answer of this question, I will hand it back to the Nikki. Who needs to take our initiatives around the school? They need to take a group picture with us. Um, I'm sorry, thank you very much for your questions. So who also responds to Sir? Yeah, thank you so very much. Uh, as I talk with you, we have uh, a woman that's leading uh, the adolescent girl child uh, planning and empowerment program. And uh, I'm sure uh, that lady is ready to collaborate with you. And uh, as yes. it was said, uh, Lady Nikki will be able to give you that uh, uh, detail, the contact of that lady. Of that, uh, lady. And uh, honestly, uh, Niger State is ready to, to collaborate with you. Can everybody come down to the last two hours whilst uh, the Nikkei sit down? We have a good picture, and that will be so. Please, 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 can we do that quickly? 